the Geneva Motor Show is always about a lot of horsepower. We even get a lot of big parts about tuning scene here and you know 1000 horsepower or whatever but this one is not about the maximum horsepower and I think it's maybe the most important vehicle on the motor show even if not everyone is really realizing that this is the Hyundai Ioniq it's an all new car which is coming in three versions directly as the built-in hybrid as the plug-in hybrid and in the far corner right there We'll also go to that one quite soon as the pure electric version. And that's really a revolutionary principle. And it's also quite daring because we think, okay, you release a car in three different kind of electric versions. Well, that's, of course, cost intensive because you're not relying just on one solution. But, of course, you can share stuff and, you know, you just rethink a new electronic platform then. So that can make sense. And... You leave the choice open to the customer and then you can see later on which one will be the most successful then you can maybe build your success on. And then start here with the built-in hybrid. The petrol engine is 1.6 liter petrol engine and there's always a dual clutch transmission because then you can switch back and forth very easily from the electric drive and the normal combustion drive. The hybrid here has a sensor in the front, doesn't have to do with the hybrid now, this is just the, the trim level. This one, yeah, the sensor, therefore, we have a 2D Hyundai logo, which looks a little bit weird, but they hide the sensors there behind it. What I really like is that we have a blue contrast here to the white. It makes, you know, a very modern look. Also, blue um, surroundings of the headlights and the quite strong front grille. You know, this is supposed to fight the Toyota Prius, and maybe this will even work, because it is supposed to be that the prices won't be that high, this can really be a hybrid for everyone. 4 meters and 47 in length, so we are right in that compact class segment. And, well, it has something a little bit of a price, I think. Um, but overall, it's a, you know, not so special design that it cries out for, oh, I'm the most special electric vehicle, I'm totally different from everything else. But I think that makes sense because you need mass electri uh, electric vehicles that are also kind of common on the road and I think this will definitely be a step towards it. You see here there's nothing right here because this one is the built-in hybrid. To me it doesn't make too much sense to have the built-in hybrid because you know you obviously cannot charge it and then you maybe don't lose don't, don't um, gain so much um, fuel. Just remember those um, alloys because we have different ones of them 17 inch and then we can take a first look at the rear which is very remarkable because we have a split window just one short window here another one up there this maybe should create a very modern look as well and then strong taillights with a line here and here it's a very nice idea I mean why not and overall this always creates a kind of electric atmosphere um, Volkswagen is also using it for the Eagle this kind of um, kind of styling approximately and we'll also take a look at the interior, of course. Maybe just one short look right here, and then we move on to the other versions of the Ionic. Because apart from the concept, from the inside, they are all, of course, pretty much alike. And the steering wheel makes a very good impression. It's also small and compact, has a flattened end. And Hyundai has, of course, really stepped up the game as for the interior quality. And... It feels like a normal compact car, but they've thought through the design that it also fits to the outside. And my first impression here is really good. I mean, look at the middle console especially. It has a kind of simple design. The surfaces are special as well. It's not just like, like plain plastic. It has kind of a comp, a, a micro comp surface here, like a honeycombs. And... That is a really great thing because, you know, you're not wasting you know, any not sustainable material, not creating too much cost, but still have a very good surface here. And also how the climate unit here is arranged. That all looks very, very clean and modern if we look here on, on the interior part. So that makes a really good impression. Also the dual clutch transmission and all of the buttons we press. Everything from solid quality. And, well, the car is not electric with power at the moment so I'm sitting quite far away from the steering wheel 
therefore I cannot really say how much space there is in the rear, but maybe the other cars will have another setup because you know when the front seat is way in the back now, it would not be fair to test the rear space. However, even if the seat is in the, in the rear, it would be more forward, but still, it works still with my knees. So, there's a good offering of the knee space, and headroom is okay for people with nine, 1 meters and 90. So, for a compact car, definitely already reasonable space, and will be very interesting to compare the trunk space. By the way, one interior, well, it's, it's closed. Maybe the other ones are open, then we can take a look at the trunk. Um, or we can look from <laughs> from the upside above. Not sure how it is with the mirroring of a camera, but it looks like a normal compact car trunk space. Doesn't seem like that we'll be losing too much in the trunk space. But let's check the other versions. This one here is the plug-in version. Blue contrast at the alloys, quite nice. This one here, then you can plug in. Has a little bit of a different styling with a glossy front grille, also a 3D logo in this case because we don't have the sensors here. Ionic plug in. The basic difference you see from the outside is here because you can then here plug in your cable to charge the car. And there's a maximum pure electric range of about 50 kilometers, which will be enough for normal daily commuters, for example, in Europe. Um, there has been a survey that, more, like I think, 80 or 90% of the car drivers drive 20 to 40 kilometers maximum in a day, and also th uh, two, 23 hours a day a car is just standing on the parking lot. And that's why that can also work, definitely. The interior is totally the same, again. And I really have to say it's a great styling. Let's see if we can move seats here. No. Seat is not activated, and I think the trunk will be locked as well. Then that would be a basic scheme. It's locked at the moment. Yeah, um, I'll soon ask someone about it that we can really compare that. Then let's first move on to the pure electric vehicle. It has no front grille, we see. The only electric, this one then has a pure electric range, and well, it's the only range it has of 250 kilometers, and that's really promising. I mean, great, if you compare, for example, to the e-Golf or, or also, I mean, in Tesla, you pay 1,000 euros to settle Tesla Model S here. There are no price officially, but it could really be something, you know, achievable, definitely, they say. This is here to re reduce the wind resistance, definitely, because we don't need so much cooling for the, for the stuff we have in the front there. There's no combustion engine inside. And, and the plug-in loading is also not here but in the later part. This is here a wall box. You can charge it very well and very fast. And, or, I mean, you can also just charge it at home with a normal household plug, but then it takes longer. This is a different trim level here now with darker seats. You see those golden contrasts. Also, again, a nice design idea. And I think the main thing about this car is really that it's not only good from the concept, it's good in the build quality, also from the interior, and it has really nice little design ideas, definitely. Seat, ah, this seat is powered, great, this seat is powered. So, and I'll just put my driving position in now. Like this, I always have the backrest quite upright, not too far away from the steering wheel, a lot of people sit too far away from the steering wheel and then cannot act accordingly. I really like the steam. It makes a sporty impression. And, well, I must say I'm really impressed by this interior. I mean, if it's really, you know, not the high prices, really an achievable price, then you get really, really fancy stuff here. It just, everything fits together somehow. It's a, a very subjective feeling, a very subjective auto feel, a car feeling I get here. And now I can test what about the rear space when also tall drivers are in the front and as I've moved this move the seat forward wow really good package look at that this kind of space in front of my knees that's really sorry how did they do that and even um, put all the electric stuff inside here and that just confirms my opinion that this is I mean there's no one here and all the for example like uh, special tuning cars, Koenigsegg, Alpina and stuff, or, or Bugatti, everyone is looking around and, oh my god, the super horsepower cars. But everyone should be here, I think. 
So let's see if we can open the hatch right here because the car was powered. The gray scheme is carried over also at the rear. Yes, that one goes open. And it, well, it looks like the other trunk. And it's almost a little bit like a, like, a, like a station wagon, like an estate. You see, you have to put the electric equipment somewhere, therefore it's not that high right there. You see, but in the front you can put some more stuff. Uh, but I mean, in general, a very well usable trunk for your everyday grocery. And there's also a very easy access to it, definitely. So, I'm really amazed. The only thing that they did, well, they tried to differentiate the pure electric version a little bit just from the other ones, but everything else, all three look the same. And Hyundai really delivers a solution here. And you cannot say, oh, this is pure electric and this doesn't work. Why? Because this is plug in hybrid, that's bad. Because this is an inbuilt hybrid, this is bad. Because here are three solutions. And you cannot say, you know, you don't find your right one. This is the electric future here and really better than probably anything else we have seen on the motor show from the concept. I want to show you the, um, the cockpit perspective one more time in detail and I'll make some room for Holger because the cockpit was also one of the most interesting things I saw. I put the seat in the front and if you look from behind then to the front there you see what I mean. It's kind of like a layout we usually just see in a, in a luxury car. And also if I compare it with other Hyundai models, I think this is even more beautiful because, first of all, the contrast, then the special surfaces, which are different from the plain plastic. And how also the, the outset of the car is repeated in design on the inside. Solid buttons to press, very good overview. Temperature still not with the touchscreen as we know, used to it controlling the temperature and the, the vent power and then what well, is special with the electric version you also have more space here in the very front as we know from a, from a Tesla and a lot of controls here also on the inside for example for the driving mode we'll um, take some close-up shots of that one here so in the front we know beneath the USB and 12 volt power supply there it is more space because you know there's no transmission from the con uh, combustion engine. And then here, those on the driving mode, drive, park, neutral and rear. And there's more of this middle console here, for example, seat heating, seat cooling. Again, a very simple, nice and functional layout. And there again, the difference, this one here is the plug-in hybrid and same as the built-in hybrid has this shifting gear lever and of course as the transition is below that you don't have the space over here. So that's the basic difference on the interior. Everything else is basically then the same. So at this year's motor show is closing. I think this is really the most important car to me because this one has a completely new concept. Three cars and all set sails on electric vehicles. And with this car Honda is maybe doing the best service here for you know the whole society because this car will bring the electric vehicles even more to a mass market. I mean, Toyota started it really and did a very good job there. Hyundai is following right now and not only with the built-in hybrids like Toyota, also with the plug-in or also with the pure electric version we've shown you. I want to hear your comments about that one, about my opinion about this car and also what do you think in general on the exterior and the interior we've shown you here and this concept of the car which hardly anyone realizes it, but I hope, I really hope in this case, that this car will be successful. Thank you very much for watching this exclusive preview.